everybody, how's it going? So a couple days ago, I shot out the Neural Quad Cortex versus this amazing Rev Generator 120 Mark II that I'm gonna be giving away on oldies but baddies real soon. Anyway, I did a profile of the amp and tried it out on the Quad Cortex and shot them out. And I asked you guys what you thought was the real amp and which was the Quad Cortex. And the thing was, they were so close, I had to pull up the files just to make sure I had the real amp versus the SIM. Let's find out which was which. All right, here it is again, the Neural Quad Cortex. This is the box everybody's talking about. And I gotta say, you know, when I first started playing with amp sims back in the 90s, you know, the difference between say a real amp and it would have been like the Line 6 Pod, the original one, the difference between the two was like that far apart. Then I started doing YouTube back in 2014 and one of the first videos I did was Axe Effects versus The Real Deal. And I think the amp was, and the sim were about that far apart, maybe a little bit closer. But as of a couple days ago where we shot this thing out, against a real amp. I think the difference is about that much. It's really getting to be that close. The technology has definitely matured since 2014. It's become a much more reliable platform. And I think that's absolutely fantastic because a box like this is definitely gonna open up a lot of options for the home recording engineer. And by that, I mean you guys out there working on your desktops, that kind of thing. It's definitely going to bring into question the existence of a lot of project studios because the technology has gotten that good. Anyway, let's run the shootout. Let me show you which was the real mix, which was the amp. Now, coming from an engineer's perspective, how it sits in the mix is what's most important to me because that's what's gonna wind up going on a client's record. But for the guitar player at home, you guys probably wanna hear this tracks soloed up just so you can hear the differences. Now back to the full mix, I had an idea. I'm kind of curious and I want you guys to tell me this. I'm gonna take the titling off and I'm gonna swap the mixes out from sim to real amp back and forth, but I'm not going to show anything in the titles or give you guys any kind of visual indicator. I want all you guys out there with the golden ears, the guys who can really tell the subtle differences between an awesome sim and an awesome tube amp, where the changes are and what's what. What's the real app, what's the sim? Here we go. Not so easy, is it? 
Anyway, uh, just to finish this video off, I thought I'd read off a few of your comments. Don't worry, viewers' comments will be coming on Friday as normal, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun to do a couple dedicated ones uh, to d this particular piece of gear because some of the comments are just <laughs> amazing. I don't understand how a piece of digital gear that still works and sounds really good would become obsolete. So you're running out the house to go find your nearest Axe Effects 1? This kind of stuff might start putting amp companies out of business, i.e. just need to buy a two rocks patch instead of a $3,000 amp. Well, if this generation of technology isn't going to do it, the next generation of technology probably will. Now, that's not to say tube amp purists are going to go away anytime soon. That's just not going to happen. There's always going to be a market for tube amps because they're really freaking popular. But for the kid at home, something like this or what's going to come after it is definitely going to open up a whole lot more opportunities and fit a smaller budget. It's just the inevitable march of technology. It's going to happen and kicking and screaming about it isn't going to change that fact. It's so freaking disappointing that all music guitar YouTubers do these paid, obviously marketing driven reviews in less than a week apart. It's just so obvious that it's a marketing campaign. It makes me very hesitant about believing your opinion. This is the first time I comment about this because this channel is one of my favorites. I usually regard Glenn as an honest and straightforward guy. Well, here's something honest and straightforward. I didn't get paid a fucking dime to make my quad cortex video. I'm not getting paid a fucking dime to make this quad cortex video. The only way I'm gonna make any money off these fucking things is maybe from the YouTube ads and maybe if you guys click one of the affiliate links and go buy something off Sweetwater or Toman or something like that. That's how I'm getting paid. I don't even know if I get to keep this fucking thing. For all I know, Neural's gonna want it back. That wasn't actually fucking discussed. So I might get to keep it, I might not, but I can't pay my fucking electricity bills with a quad cortex. I hope that explains my situation to you just a little bit better. But Glenn it said it includes paid promotion. Yes, because in case they give this to me, I don't want to seem like I'm fucking lying and I don't want to get fucking sued or anything like that either. So, yeah, it is my opinion. I like it. I'll probably wind up using on a bunch more stuff. Uh, like I said, though, if Neural wants it back, I got to ship it back. That's just the way it goes. It's a nice piece of gear, but it doesn't come near to the Fractal. Why? It is easy to program via a touchscreen, but does not have all the features that Fractal have. Watch Paul David's video. There might be some truth to that. Might be bullshit. I don't know. Now, Paul's a great guy. I got to hang out with him at TGU and we talked about cameras and that kind of shit. Really interesting conversation. Paul's a great musician, but that's the thing. Paul is looking at it from a musician's perspective. I'm looking at it from a studio engineer's position where it's gonna be like, okay, if I plug this in, can I put this on a client's record and are they gonna be disappointed with the result? That's what I care about. Is this going to be convincing enough as an amp sim? Will it replace a tube amp? Will I get more sounds out of this than I would with a stack of tube amps that are gonna cost me tens of thousands of dollars. That's my perspective. But also from a studio perspective is the fact that I usually don't use these things for reverbs, delays, courses, or any of that kind of stuff because I've already got world-class effects that do that stuff. I mean, seriously, I, when it comes to reverbs and stuff, I've got the best that's out there. I've got the best from Waves, McDSP, Slate, PSP, you name it. I work with all these companies already, so I'm not really looking for the better reverb or the better course or that kind of thing, because honestly, I couldn't give a shit about any of that stuff. All I want to know is, is this going to sound as good as a real tube amp? Because that's what matters the most. To me, anyway, your mileage may vary. Most of the demos chuck like this one, and I could not give a shit. Or some just slather effects all over and say. Would like to hear a clean amp sim without multiple delays or a blues tone with mild distortion, but no. That's because this channel is a heavy metal production channel. What kind of music do we play on a heavy metal production channel? Hmm, you guessed it, metal. Anyway, thanks so much for writing in. It's musicians like you are the reason why I've been doing this show since 2014 and I'm not about to run out of material anytime soon.